So hi everyone, I'm Clément Jadbeck, and today I'm going to present you my Python library, Pitay, that unifies generative autoencoders implementations in PyTorch. So well, first, what is a generative autoencoder? Well, you may know autoencoders, we have a class of deep learning models that try to map complex input data into a much lower dimensional space called the Latin space. And so the main idea is to learn a Latin representation, so a lower dimensional representation of those input data. Well, generative autoencoders are basically a subclass of autoencoders that are made generative using a sampling distribution. And that sampling distribution can be used either during training, as for the variational autoencoders, or after training, as for the regularized autoencoders. But well, why did we create PTA? So, well, first, as you may know, existing implementations of the original papers may be difficult to adapt to various cases, be in different frameworks, or no longer maintained. And so PTA has a brick like structure that allows users to use different models with different sampling techniques, net neural network architectures, and training schemes on their own data pretty easily. Second, PTA provides you with a reproducible research environment. So most of the models that are implemented in PTA were actually able to reproduce the original uh, paper results. Finally, the code was thought to be as flexible as possible and as accessible as possible. And so we'll find on the GitHub an online documentation and the library is also illustrated for different tutorials. So this is the structure of the code. So basically this is a really brick like structure. So on the left, you, you have the models that you can choose and you can define your encoder and decoder architecture. In the middle, you've got the trainers. So the trainers are also thought to be as flexible as possible because you can define your optimizers, schedulers and callbacks. And on the right, you've got the samples that you can choose to generate data from a trained uh, generative autoencoder. And, so, and you may find also other features such as experiment monitoring tools, such as 1DB, ML, and MLflow that has been integrated to uh, PTA. And you can also uh, share your train model through the org interface hub. So now let's have a look to the API of the code. So let's say that I want to train a version to encoder with PTA on my own data. So the first thing that I need to do is to define my architecture. So it can be done pretty easily uh, using the base encoder and base decoder class. So I import them and I create two other classes, my encoder and my decoder, where basically I specify my neural network architecture. Then I instantiate those classes and I can launch a training. To launch a training, I need different things. So the first thing that I need is to define a training configuration. This is basically where I specify the number of epoch, the learning rate and the batch size that I want to use. Then I define a model configuration, here a VAE configuration, and I can instantiate my VA. So to instantiate it, I pass the model configuration as argument, but I also pass the encoder and decoder that I've just built before. Then I can instantiate a training pipeline with the training configuration and the model, and I can launch the training pipeline on my own data. In the end, once the model is trained, I can reload it using the automodel class pretty easily. And then I can use whatever sample I like to generate new data from that trained model. So in that example, this is a Gaussian mixture uh, sampler. So basically, all you have to do is to define your sampling configuration. And you can instantiate a generation pipeline. And you can launch a pipeline by specifying the number of samples that you want to generate. So here, you've got the list of the models that are actually uh, implemented in PTA. So there are 25 models that are currently implemented in the library, and most of which were able to reproduce the original results uh, provided in the papers. Finally, those are different resources that you may need to get your hands on the code. So basically, the code is available in GitHub at that link. You will also find an online documentation. The library is available in PyPy and can be installed with that command line. And I want to stress that that library is also open to contributors. So if you want to contribute to a new model, a new sampler, or simply fix a bug, I would be very happy to help you in that direction. So thank you very much for attention. I would be very happy to answer any of your questions if you have any.